trust this makes things clear between us. So yesterday never happened. Our orders are to proceed to Chatham. You may disembark there and take your machine back to London. Is that clear? Perfectly clear. Compared the machine with my pendulum clock, it has lost six minutes and four seconds since I left London. Yet the journey back from Lisbon took 32 days, and I believe it kept near perfect time. Something happened on the Centurion, something I don't understand. Well, you need another trial. No, no, I need time. Time to think, time to test it again, but not at sea. It's too big, I realize that now. The act of Queen Anne demands a practical solution. It's impossible. The machine is perfect. You should have seen the people who came in the shop today to see it. The test was useless. I have no proof. No one will believe me. The machine is impressive, Mr. Harrison, and you assure us that on the Lisbon test it performed well. Yes, sir. But you have no documentary evidence for that. No, sir, I do not. But I'm not asking for the no test... No copy of the ship's log, no certificate from the ship's captain. If the machine performed as well as you suggest, does that not seem to you a little strange? I understand that there is no proof, but... Mr. Bradley, the Admiralty has had some difficulty in obtaining Captain Proctor's papers. Since his untimely death in Lisbon in October, Captain Mann, as we've already discussed, failed to report the timepiece in his log. This, this is why we're discussing a further test. My Lord, is it wise to squander our resources on a second test when there is no clear evidence for the success of the first? Particularly when other research, Sir Edmund Halley's lunar observations, for example, is proving very successful. Mr. Harrison, are you prepared for such a test? No, sir, I am not. Ah, my point, I think, gentlemen, the machine is no good. The machine is good. I've tested it myself day and night in my workshop since my return under the most extreme conditions. But I intend to produce a better However, I must ask for additional funding. I beg the indulgence of your lordships in this matter, but I can assure you that since my voyage, there's no man on earth more eager to solve this problem than myself. Mr. Harrison, we do not doubt your enthusiasm, but it is not the business of the board to speculate upon it. Excuse me, sir. I'm seeking a board of longitude. Never heard of it, sir. This is the Admiralty. Uh, it's their first meeting today. It is, I believe, in the boardroom. The boardroom? Oh, why didn't you say so? You're looking at it. Oblige you, sir. Lord, I beg leave to approach. If it pertains to the matters we're discussing. Indeed it does, my lord. I have in my hand. A certificate from one Roger Wills. Lately, master of His Majesty's ship, the Orphan. Uh, may I read? Yes, 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 very well. Yes. Oh, excuse me. I haven't run so far since I was a child. Refreshments for the gentleman. Uh, no, my lord. Thank you, my lord. This is the passage. When we made the land, according to my reckoning on others, it ought to have been the start. But John Harrison declared to me and the rest of the ship's company that according to his machine, it ought to be the lizard, the which, indeed, it was found to be. His observation showing the ship to be more west than my reckoning, above one degree and 26 miles. 
My lord. I trust this will assist you in your deliberations. Mr. Wills is present if you should require further confirmation. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Mr. Harrison, would you excuse us for a moment? Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't sit right with my conscience to let a lie stand in the way of your machine. Not when it may do some good for poor sailors like myself. 500 pounds. Half now, yeah, half when the second clock is complete. The sum to be set against any future prize winning. George tried for more, but they wouldn't have it. No. At least you may go home now with some money in your pocket. I'm not going home. I'm going to take a place here in London. Got to work fast. Your family? They'll have to come with me. Good news, if that is the term for it, is that Mrs. Gould will be unable to get her divorce unless she can prove adultery. Am I to take it this is not the case? No, it is not. Then she has only one alternative, and that is to seek a judicial separation. That would mean an order from the court that you are to live separately, even though you are still technically married and therefore unable to consider remarriage. Well, I don't think Muriel wants to get remarried. Quite. Lacking adultery, she will have to cite mental cruelty. Do you know what that means? I can guess. Allow me to explain it to you clearly. It will be necessary for her to make certain allegations in open court. These allegations may subsequently be reported in the newspapers. There's nothing we can do to stop that. If we are to proceed, you must consider the consequences of this. I don't understand. Why would the newspapers be interested in me? Well, they aren't. But a wife suing a husband is uncommon enough, I'm afraid, to arouse their curiosity. Now, I'm, I have been sent several statements from your wife's solicitors, and they're very detailed indeed about your alleged drinking, the instability of your mind, and your character. I see. Commander, it is my duty to inform you that you stand to lose your children, your house, your reputation, and quite probably your job, if you both continue in this action. Well, thank you, Mr. Worthington. You made things very clear. Thank you for your advice. I wonder, do you think Muriel understands all this? I'm sure Mrs. Gould is competently advised. Yes, of course. I'm sure she is. Thank you. So there's two bedrooms, small attic room, and this is the sitting room. I see that the machine has already chosen its quarters. The money the board has given is to pay for a new timepiece. Not much left for us, I'm afraid. It's best I could do. How long? Two years at most. And then we go home? Then we go home. Right. Let's get started, then. Thank you. Thank you. Won't you have a cake? No, thank you. Oh, I've got some pictures for you that Cecil drew. 